All right, you guys. <laughs> Tell me, who were your early influences? <coughs> How did you guys get together? And uh, come on, where you been ripping ideas off all this time? Yeah, from? Ripping up things from everybody. All right, <laughs> Tell me about it. But you know, we grew up listening to you know, Aerosmith and uh, Deep Purple and Zeppelin, and you know, like that. We all, me and Tommy, went to high school together. We were in rival bands, yeah. playing backyard parties and things like that. <laughs> and uh, when we got together, Tommy and Nikki um, were looking for um, people to, to start a band with, and they, fit, we found, they found Mick in a, a ad in a newspaper. It said, loud, rude, aggressive guitar player. There you go. So I called him up, and he looked like Morticia from the Adams Family, so... Yeah. Your guy. <laughs> Opened the door and said, this is the guy. We didn't even have to hear him play. And then he played, and he's incredible as well, but just the way he looked, he was the, the guy yeah. we were looking for. Yeah, and then they, uh, they were looking for a singer, and then I was singing at a club in Hollywood, and, uh, and that was it. He, he was belting out, like, cheap trick, cheap trick cover, songs. cover tunes, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, we'll, <laughs> we'll be back with more proof. <laughs> And we got smoking in the boys room. Right? It's about this next clip we're gonna see. Um, the next clip is smoking in the boys room, and uh, if you ever seen the movie The Hills Have Eyes, a cannibal guy, and and. Uh, this guy's name is Michael Behrman. He played. He's the guy that played the principal in uh, in our in the video, and he's also in One Foot of the Cuckoo's Nest. Real weird dude, but uh, yeah, strange cool. looking <laughs> cat, man. All right. So let's have it. All right. This is smoking, smoking in the boys' room. room. Check it out. Bend over. The worst side of it. Everybody knows that I'm smoking in. Okay, we know legally you can't talk about the accident mm -hmm. with Razzle from Hanoi Rocks. Right. But uh, tell me, you know, like your true feelings on it and tell me something about this new album. Yeah, well, um, we wanted to put a message on for all the kids um, because there is a danger in drinking and driving and we don't want to lose any of our fans. Even though we're the bad boys of rock doesn't mean that we don't care about people. And a lot of bands, you know, I mean, all bands care about their fans. And, um, you know, we do like to have a good time, just like everybody else. But what we're just trying to say is that when you do drink or you do do drugs or you do do anything like that, you know, take a limo, take a cab or sleep there or have a friend drive you, you know, because a lot of people think that um, it, it won't, you know, won't happen to them, but you know, it you know, can happen to anybody. It's, 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 that's real good advice. I mean, one thing of working with uh, Gene Simmons in the studio, mm -hmm. Gene doesn't drink, he doesn't uh, do drugs, and he's um, a lot of people um, too. I mean, if you choose to do it or if you choose not to do it, I mean, as long as your personal life is exciting enough, that's where it's at because it's you know it's it's just no fun when you can't stand up. Right. Yeah, <laughs> walking on your lips is right, no fun. Right. <clears throat> All right, don't go away. We're going to be back with more crew. Ooh. Tell me, you know, like you guys, you use these uh, upside down uh, pentagram and a lot of your stuff. Uh, I've, in, what, 1978, 1979, um, I found it confused a lot of people. Mm. Uh, what does it mean to you? Well, you know, when we uh, put it on the, on the Too Fast for Love album, our first record, actually, all we wanted to, we just wanted a symbol that when you saw the symbol, you thought of Motley Crue. And we, so we looked at a lot of, you know, different things, you know, experimental, all kinds of different things. But that was just like the most, uh, the strongest symbol that we could find. What are in your current plans? <laughs> right now we're just um, 
just road pigs. I mean, we got like <laughs> we got like this massive tour ahead of us, and uh, we're just, you know, just doing our thing on the road. So as far as current plans, we're we're locked up for a while here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. This tour is gonna. Um, we finish up. Well, we started in Japan, and we, we um, this was your first time in Japan. Yeah, we, yeah right. we didn't go there last year. Yeah. And uh, so the, uh, the Canadian North American part of we wind up winded up in Honolulu around Christmas time. So we try to follow the the, the pro golf circuit. You know, wherever yeah, there's the sun, we're going to play. Good for you. And um, no we, snow on we this. Played, Keep it hot. Yeah. We play down in Brazil in uh, January, and then February, March, April in Europe, and that just about winded up. So we got a long time yeah. to go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Stay tuned. <laughs> We're going to be back with more sex, rock and roll, and the crew. 1990 Heavy Metal Wednesday. Yeah. want to rate the countries. Uh, now, which country do you like touring the best in? That's an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> Sweden. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sweden. Why? Do you like Sweden <laughs> the best? Uh, we, I tell you what, when we just got to uh, Stockholm last year, we're walking down the street, and I think they ship ugly girls they to, to Norway or someplace like that. If you're ugly, they take you get you out of the country. You walk down the street, and there's nothing but beautiful blondes, barefooted, and you oh, know, it's and, like, and the, uh, and it's all uh, beaches and topless beaches and nude beaches, and it's just like you know, home. It's great when people are relaxed about sex. I mean, it's really great. It makes a big difference. Oh, especially the Swedes. It makes a big difference when people are relaxed. On the beaches, of course, everyone's running around half naked, so that's like, that's a nice sight as well. It's the way it should be. Of course. The way it should I love be. it. The only didn't way. Make such the a only way. Big deal about it. We'd all have a lot more fun. I wish they'd let them do that in California. Yeah. I'd move down by Vince's place. <laughs> What's the name of this next video coming up? Too young to fall in love. All right. It's uh, in the video we're saving this poor young girl from prostitution, and we become the superheroes. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of it's twisted a, around. It's kind of shot. This, it's, this takes place in like Soho or or, or old like the, just like an old Chinatown setting. It's, it's kind of neat. All we, right. We get, we get to do a little. We get to do a little. Fight. Motley Crew to the rescue. That's we it. Get to do a little Superheroes we, right we out. Fighting TV land. Video and stuff. It's fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. Cutting the punch out a few people. It was great. Right, that's all for Heavy Metal Wednesday with the crew here. You'll be sure to watch uh, next week. All right, thanks a lot for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's go talk about sex some more now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clothes have been provided by Ann Pinkerton. Tune in at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on the USA Network as Catherine Kinley and Lisa Robinson bring you the latest in music news and the hottest music videos in stereo. For Radio 1990, this is Al Bandiro. Have a good evening. Now, stay tuned as the top international tennis players take to the courts in Flushing Meadows, New York. USA Sports continues its exclusive coverage of the nation's premier tennis tournament, the 1985 U.S. Open, live next on USA.